Welcome to behind the scenes electronics department of uh, John's workshop. Um, what we're looking at today is some of the stuff that uh, I've been putting together to uh, make my petrol electric locomotive and generally electric locomotives powered by brushless motors. I'm a big fan of brushless motors ever since I discovered them. Um, here we can see a range of four of very different sizes. The one on the right, this little one here, that's a 100 watt motor. Um, I've used four of those uh, as power units in the wedge locomotive, which you can see videos of elsewhere on this site. Um, that loco has been running quite happily for about three years now and giving rides to children of all ages, as we say, at Vivery Park in Taunton very successfully. Um, the three larger sizes of motors, these have all got to do with the petrol electric locomotive that I'm playing with at the moment, uh, which again you can see a video of that, it's a seven and a quarter inch gauge loco, you can see videos of that running uh, elsewhere on this site. The very biggest motor, this one here on the left, that is actually a 1.8 kilowatt brushless electric motor. Um, I'm using one of those as the generator connected up to a 120cc Honda petrol engine. Uh, that forms the kind of lift out um, electrical generator source on the locomotive. Uh, and that appears to work quite successfully. The two middle sized motors that we see here, um, they are quite handy. The, the, the larger of the two just nicely fits between the wheel backs of seven and a quarter inch gauge um, bogies and the smaller squatter one of the two on the right that just neatly fits between the wheel backs on a five inch gauge. Um, the bogies we have completed at the moment are seven and a quarter inch gauge that's the ones you can see running on the other videos. I'm currently also putting together a set of five inch gauge bogies. Uh, the whole locomotive is designed to be modular. I can take the power unit off, drop the bogies off, so I can theoretically swap the bogies between the seven and a quarter set and a five inch set, and I should be able to run on either gauge when I've finished those bogies. Now, over here we've got a couple of drive boards that drive the brushless motors. Um, I'll have more to say about those later, but um, I designed those boards to drive a brushless motor um, and we'll see them working in a minute. They are also quite capable of driving an ordinary DC motor. Um, it's not the most cost effective way of driving a DC motor, but the same board can drive an ordinary DC motor by using two of the output wires instead of all three. Um, now the control system is this beastie here which uh, started life as one of these. It's a standard off-the-shelf uh, computer development kit that I got from Farnell. Um, it's the STM F7 Discovery. Um, they are selling now for about £50, something like that. Um, and all the programming was done using the embed free online compiler and there's um, I shall publish the uh, software for anyone that really wants to be interested in having a look at that but um, here we can see the graphic screen it's the locomotive is entirely driven by touch screen there are no mechanical switches or levers anywhere other than the uh, I've got a elsewhere there's a three position uh, lock switch center off and you turn it one way for forward travel and the other way for reverse. Deliberately made it so that you cannot accidentally or you cannot too easily switch between forward and reverse. It's a very deliberate action by taking your hand off the display and putting it somewhere else. Um, right, lashed up on the bench here. Um, we've got a 30 volt bench power supply so we're not um, going to run anything at huge speed or anything. Um, the loco is the loco is actually designed to run at 48 volts. The, the motors are rated at 48 volts, although um, experience has shown that uh, good performance can be got 
with supply voltages anywhere in the range of about 20 volts up to about 75. Uh, so you could use this on a battery powered um, locomotive with you know two, three, four or five 12 volt cells in series if you so wanted. Um, looking at the display um, I've gone to some uh, lengths to make a kind of mid last century look MOD style analog uh, meters. Uh, there's one at the top left hand corner which is the system voltage. Uh, the one at the bottom is reading nonsense at the moment. That's a watts meter power. Um, I don't have the current sensor connected which is why that's going to read nonsense. And the uh, biggest meter is the speedo miles per hour. Now to drive it, I simply move my finger up there and the higher up I go, the faster, the more torque rather is delivered to the motors. If I take my finger off, the uh, control slides back down to the middle position. It's a kind of auto dead man's function, if you like. Um, now just on the bench here, running up to 5.1 5 miles an hour. Um, that would actually be 10 miles an hour because I've got two motors connected instead of the four that it was designed for. Um, I can apply braking by moving my finger down this section of the slider, the, the brake section. That's a regenerative electrical brake, which is very effective at all speeds above about one and a half miles an hour. Um, obviously, the effectiveness of it drops off below that. Um, being a touch screen, I can also, of course, use this for various button type functions. And as you can see, I've just more or less doubled up the, the three meter movements to each beer button function which are not doing anything in this demo on the bench um, but in the finish loco they will sound the horn and um, there's a spare one which I don't know if I'm ever going to find anything to do with. Looking now at one of the individual motor drive boards in some more detail um, brushless motors you cannot just parallel them up like you can with ordinary DC motors um, so every brushless motor is going to require a separate drive board, something like this. Um, on the back there, that's a big um, MOSFET switching module. There are six MOSFETs in there, arranged as a three-phase bridge. Uh, we use all six of the MOSFETs in there to drive a brushless motor, or if we were driving an ordinary DC motor, we'd be using four out of the six MOSFETs in there. Um, elsewhere on here we can see a few bits, there's some opto isolators there to make the control system nice and immune from spikes and nasties that can happen in high power electrical systems. Um, it keeps going in and out of focus, I'm not quite sure why that is, but um, it says on the board, I've printed on the board, it's rated at uh, 20 amps. Um, oh, there we go, 63 volts. 20 amps. Uh, that's a little bit conservative. Um, the board, in fact it's the electrolytic capacitors that limit the voltage to 63 on this particular board. Um, everything else on the board is rated up to 100 volts. Um, the current of 20 amps is, I've decided, that was a kind of design criteria for the larger of the two um, brushless motors that I actually use on the seven and a quarter inch locos. Um, they are rated at pretty much 20 amp continuous, but the board is quite capable of delivering well in excess of that, um, 60 amps for short periods of time, and the motor is well capable of taking 60 amps for short times. Um, and the MOSFET module on the back, which is the limiting factor really, um, is actually rated at up to 120 amps, so shouldn't be any problem with overloads of voltage or current on that and I haven't managed to blow one up just yet. Um, it might seem like an extravagance to have a separate control board for every motor, um, and it's a slight inconvenience I suppose, but 
actually these boards are not very expensive to build um, there's not much on, on them that is expensive the most expensive part is the MOSFET module which is about 20 pounds uh, the rest of it's all sort of tuck me hate me bits really 